Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about 10 cards that have absolutely spiked like crazy. Many of them on a reserve list. One of them is actually a commander card, which is almost worth the commander deck itself. So that's interesting, nonetheless, where you can buy one uh, 100 cards and one of them be as close to the MSRP of the deck as possible. But let's start with a reserve list card. I do own a few copies of this. I went in my bulk. So I was building a fortress of bulk to protect my house from flooding. And it looks like the house is not going to flood, which is great, but it means I have to deconstruct the fortress. In the bulk, I found two of these. And I was like, oh, okay, it's seven bucks. So bulk, there's many ways that you can define bulk. Like for me, it's not worth my time to really short out like, if I know it's in it, I can find it. But if I don't know about it, it's just like kind of, oh, this card was 15 cents. Uh, next, we have a card that I didn't expect to go up anymore just because the MSRP is of the Commander deck it is in is not, I mean, it is also going up. I like it. I think it's actually one of the best cards you can play in EDH in white. It reminds me a lot of Angel's Grace, but it's just better. It's strictly better. Um, the phasing, I've seen a lot of phasing cards go up in price because now people know what it is. And that's one of the interesting facts about Commander or even the Invocations, like Aggravated Assault, Attrition. These cards, people didn't really know that they were EDH cards until they got them. And they were like, oh, wow, this is fantastic in my deck. And the more people who run it, the more people who want it. All right, so let's talk about Mirage. Now, this card has been spiking like crazy. And it is two double blue. Whenever you play it, choose a land type. So it's not great in... It's not good against five color dragons, right? Maybe it is good against five color dragons because you can hit one of your lands. But uh, choose a land type. All lands of the chosen type gain phasing. The way I used to play this, so I own a few copies of this. I will make a video later showing that I'm not entirely sure how many copies of this I own, but Harbinger of the Night from Miraz, I own about 12 to 14 copies of, I think 12 copies of that card. And I was going via my bulk because I was creating this barrier, which I still haven't taken down because I'm lazy. Like the barrier took about two hours to construct and it was... Well, first of all, I had to move all my, what I would consider valuable bulk upstairs to the second floor. Then I moved all my non-valuable bulk from downstairs. Don't ask me like why this was set up this way, but it was. And created a barrier for my doors. And then I used duct tape and I should take a picture of it sometime soon before I take it down. But I'm not looking forward to taking down this barrier because it took me an hour to two hours to build. From just, I was like, all right, I don't have sand, I don't have dirt, I don't have a shovel to put dirt into a bag. What do I have? Magic cards. <laughs> That's what I have. I have 100,000 plus of magic cards that is completely useless that I donate away anyway. So I made a barrier. Uh, unfor I guess fortunately, the uh, water didn't hit the magic card, so we're good. It did hit my front door, so it was very dangerously close. And that's why, like, in the middle of the night at 4 a.m. on... I think it was Friday or when it was flooding the most. I was like, oh shit, I need to make like a giant, you know, I need something to soak up <laughs> the water. Uh, and yeah, that was it. Obviously, I YouTubed how to do it. So Bartel Rune Axe, this card went from, hmm, what was that, pennies maybe? To $130. Let's read it what it does. Free, a green, a red, and a black. It cannot be target of enchant creature spells. Attacking, so I said Julia has Vigilance. It's a 6 5 for 6 with Vigilance in three different colors. Um, am I missing something, or is this card just really bad? But it's on the reserve list, it's a rare from Legends. Therefore, I mean, I don't think the artwork is terrible, I, I just don't think the card is great. Sometimes when the card is like really beautiful, I can be like, okay, that's a beautiful piece of artwork. Maybe people want to collect it for that purpose, but I feel like this one. 
I mean, 6-5 was pretty good back in the day. 6-5 Vigilance back in the day was pretty good. The Enchant Creature thing is kind of meh. All right, I do own these. I think I own two, maybe more. I'm not positive. Okay, no. So what happened is I own a lot of that Chaos card in the beginning. I don't own that many of this. I'm not sure what happened to them all. Uh, but it was not considered a good card. Now it's $4. Yeah, so that that's the explanation. Now the last few cards: Bargain, Galena, Sisse, and Mira Gallery. Those cards are based on reserve list, not reserve list. Sorry, um, on bandings or on restrictions, as well as the new legendary rule for planeswalkers. So if you don't know, the new legendary rule for planeswalkers means that. You can have multiple Gideons on the same field. Therefore, Gideon of Trials got significantly better in Modern. Now, Gideon Trials saw very limited to no play in Modern. Now, he might see limited to some play. But one of the biggest winners from being unbanned, unrestricted from the ban and restriction list is Bargain. How powerful will it be? Unknown. I feel like that... Um, once, if they unban it and it's too strong, it just goes straight on the ban list again. So I wouldn't speculate too heavily on this one. In fact, if you somehow owned a lot of copies of this, which it looked like until recently it was under five, then you need to dump them because two scenarios. It's a Bitter Blossom scenario, right? Bitter Blossom was unbanned and modern. People thought it was OP and they spiked it even before it was announced. And it turned out it wasn't good. So then they kind of dropped in price. So that's one scenario. The other scenario is Golgari Grave Troll. Oh, it turns out it is semi good. And we're going to ban. Ban again. So <laughs> it's, it's a lose lose, right? So it's either very good and it's just going to get re banned, or it's very bad and it just won't go up in price. So you're going to lose anyway. So the legendary Planeswalkers makes this very good because legendary permanent means Planeswalker. So Amplis Galena and EDH can steal so much stuff. So you can steal this, you can steal that, so you can steal this, you can steal that. This Planeswalker, that Planeswalker, right? I mean, it is so good now. And I know that she is not a merfolk, although back in the day, what happened was you wouldn't have Creature Legend, Dairy Merfolk, you would have Creature Legend. This card also counts as a merfolk in the text. So I'm kind of surprised that obviously this is a merfolk. Like, look at it, look at it. Um, but overall, it's kind of, I liked her and I've always played her in EDH in my decks, but she got significantly better because she can steal planeswalkers. However, she still is very expensive. And the one card that just got out there like crazy is Captain Sisse. Wow, from pennies to $60 to 150 foil, multiple spikes all in one month like it just how can i say it? it never never stopped and it's not going to stop it's something that when i look at i can feel very very mad about because my friend used to collect foil legendaries and he had about four to eight of these i'm not kidding because again during invasion no one wanted the foil legendaries edh was not a format but he probably had maybe four leg foil uh, Empress Galenas, and they were incredibly easy to get at the time. So the ratio of foils, uh, interesting dichotomy, because the foil, when you got a foil Sisse, actually you probably got angry because that meant you didn't get a regular foil. And it's a lot different from today, where you get if you get a foil, that's a bonus. It wasn't a bonus then, it just replaced your, if it was a foil common, it replaced the common slot which is fine if it was a foil rare it replaced the rare slot which sometimes if you get a bad foil it's kind of bad and people didn't want foils because uh they were people got caught out cheating if they used foils and sometimes you couldn't have four that's why he had four to eight of them because he had to play them as a four of he had to foil out all of them to play them so lastly uh this card is 130 dollars foil <laughs> Oh man, Betrayers of Kamigawa. Um, before EDH was relevant, this was probably a bulk foil. Maybe like you would have to give it away. 
And uh, if you could go back in time, there are a bunch of cards, starting from dual lands, that I would go back and buy. You know, if you could go back when I was a child. But that's kind of the key here. The key is when you were a child, you were poor. So you actually didn't have money. And now that all the children are grown up, or you know, in age, they're grown up, they now have more money, and that's why the prices are what they are today, because there's more money into the system, which for Magic Gathering is good as a company. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.